Hey guys, I'm here to show you a quick clip of the Jeep. This is the problem I'm having mechanically. I can let it run just as it is right now, just for a few minutes. And then when I put it in reverse, it stalls out and dies. I think I know what's wrong with it, but I'm gonna show you what it is and we'll talk about it when we get in the vehicle. Okay, like I said, it's only got 71,000 miles on it. It's been running for roughly five minutes because I always try to let them warm up just a little bit. And I'm going to take the selector, put it in reverse, and watch the RPM gauge. It will start to fall and then it just falls, it just dies. And usually it does it when it's setting overnight. It doesn't do it all the time. Once it does it the first time, then usually I can start it back, put it in reverse again, and it's just fine. Let's see if it will do it now. See, it's in reverse and it died. Now I can put it back in park, start it back up, put it in reverse, and then I'm usually good to go after that. It won't, see, it won't do it again. And it won't do it the entire time I drive it that day. It only does it when it's cold overnight. So I started doing some research and what I've come to conclusion of is it's the torque converter in the transmission. There's something in there that's not locking or unlocking that's causing the motor to get into a strain. So then the RPMs, once I put it in reverse, the RPMs drop and it just stalls out because it won't engage in reverse. So I found a local guy I can take the torque converter to, and he will cut it open, and he has an upgrade kit that he can do to it, and apparently it will fix it. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. Here in the next day or two, I'll pick this back up. Once we start working on it, we're gonna drop the transmission. I'm gonna pull the torque converter. I'm gonna take it to the guy, and uh, once he rebuilds it, we're gonna put it back in and we're gonna see if that's the fix. I'm about 95% sure that's all it is, is the torque converter. And only having a Jeep for a couple of days, buying it used, of course, it kind of sucks that, you know, that I gotta pull the transmission, but it's part of it. Anything mechanical, you know, you, ha you, you take a risk on this kind of stuff. But outside of that, everything in the Jeep works really well and uh, we're still extremely happy with it. It's just the torque converter. I think the cost of the rebuild for the torque converter is gonna be around $260. So I'm gonna have the time that I put in to pull the transmission plus 260 bucks for the torque converter. And I'm also gonna flush the transmission and change the filter while I'm in there and do all the service uh, services on the transmission but i'll see here in a couple of days we'll pick back up on it and i'll show you kind of what's going on and uh and we'll see if it fixes it i'll see you then hey guys so it's been a couple of days and we pulled the torque converter out of this let me show you uh exactly what we got going on and then uh tomorrow after work i'm going to take the torque converter the guy that's gonna rebuild it, and then we're gonna bring it back and probably try to get this thing in uh, in a couple of days. But let me show you what we got. So me and Mike uh, pulled the transmission in a transfer case. And you can see up here, all of it's out. We had a really tough time with this rear drive shaft. You can see this like little lip and it like recesses in here and we like to never got that apart. And there's the transmission and transfer case. And this is the torque converter. This will bolt to the flex plate up there that's on the back of the engine. This is what I'm gonna take. I got it in this tub here. I'm gonna put it in the car, take it with me, uh, drop it off. And I think you can probably see 
the way they they're cut they have a weld around this seam and he probably cut that seam out rebuild it with the upgrades that he's going to get for it and then re-weld it and then i think he's got like a machine that balances them back out but uh should have that i think it's a one day turnaround and then went ahead and uh changed the gear oils in the differential uh with royal purple i got uh mopar transmission fluid i'm gonna do that and i'm going to change the crankcase i took this out and cleaned it up this is the cross member for the transmission kind of sanded around on it cleaned it up and then just sprayed a little coat on it just to keep it kind of looking nice i got a the mopar oil filter as well and i usually use mobile one i've always liked mobile one i used 5w20 i almost went with penzoil just because of the manufacturer uh, calls for like a penzoil or the 6323 or something like that but uh, I just like mobile one pretty much so that's what I'm gonna go with uh, let me see so I already got the differential changed I'm trying to think if there was anything else uh, I think that will be it as far as this part goes I did clean up in here this is where the cross member goes across I sanded it in here and cleaned it up which you can see that the frame and everything looks good but I just want to make sure that it stays that way so I just cleaned this up and resprayed this I'm gonna to have to we had to cut these exhaust bolts uh, they was rusted bad I don't know if you can see but you can see like they're gone so I'm hoping that that's not welded on that back side. I'm gonna try to knock those out. And it's the same way with the passenger side. They're rusted really bad. We're gonna to have to knock those out. And I cleaned this side up as well. And the bottom side of this skid plate. But me and Mike's been after it. Uh, it took about, what do you say, about two, two and a half hours something like that Probably about, two about two hours so here in a couple of days we'll put it back in and then i will uh, film us starting it for the first time with a new torque converter in it and putting it in reverse and let's just cross our fingers that it works i think that's the problem i just really really hope it is because this was a lot of work even though it just took a couple hours it was still a lot of work but uh, so we'll catch you here in a couple of days all right guys we got the brand new torque converter right there. I just went and picked it up. Uh, so we're gonna be back at it. It's been a couple of days. We came back here the next day after pulling the torque converter and just did a few little odds and ends. Uh, but I'll show you a little up close of this torque converter and uh, show you a couple more steps that we may end up doing to this thing while we got it on the rack. So here's the torque converter. It looks good. He, uh, he put the upgrade kit like I said and he explained it to me a little bit so this thing's got like a piston in it and you got your clutches and when it's cold the piston pushes down and it locks against the clutches and then when you put it in reverse it don't have no way of returning uh, the clutch pack so it ends up stalling out the engine and the reason it does that is you get dirt and grime and stuff like that in behind that piston and it starts sticking. So the fluid would go down, get in behind the piston and push it back out. But this one was dirty. They uh, they said when they cut cut it apart that the clutches were glazed and they was uh, showing a lot of signs of like being burned up pretty much. So it was good when we pulled this uh, torque converter when we did. So the other thing we got was this uh, cooler clean transmission cooler line flush and the biggest thing about this from what the guy that uh, rebuilt my torque converter is when you if you ever flush your cooler make sure that it says no water so this one 
here says uh, without the use of water-based detergents and it could be harmful to transmissions and seals. And he told me the exact same thing when I was there. He said, watch about which cooler systems you use because it can uh, mix with the, the transmission fluid and it can get into your torque converter and uh, mess your clutches up. So don't use any water-based flush systems. So what we're gonna do is the transmission cooler, you, ha you have your lines that come in and go out to your cooler and we will take this tip and just spray through the cooler and let it come out the return side. And this should help take a, a lot of the contaminants out. I think it's you know, to prevent contaminants such as friction materials and metal debris uh, from, in, from entering newly installed transmissions. So that's uh, another step we're gonna do. Uh, Michael is actually the one that recommended me do that. So we went and bought that and the studs were rusted and I cut those off, but they was welded on the back side. And Mike, he, he took a torch and he heated them up and just put a little air on them and it blew through them. And then I was able to take a punch or a chisel and a hammer on the backside and knock them off. Uh, so uh, he did a really good job with that. So we did that yesterday as well. So we're gonna get to it. I'm gonna flush this out, do the cooler line, flush the cooler system out. Then we will probably put about a half a quart of transmission fluid inside that torque converter. You don't wanna put too much because then when you turn it up and you slide it onto the input shaft, it will start pouring out of that, the center part of the torque converter. And, and then you will, it will resemble like a front leaky seal. And you don't want that because it may take a couple days for all of it to run out and you'll start seeing transmission fluid dri dripping around your carport or wherever you keep your car parked. And uh, so we're only put about a half a quart in that put it in and then we'll top the transmission off with probably, I'd say four or five quarts, uh, start it uh, for five seconds and then we'll, we'll cut it off. And then we're finished topping it off about with four more quarts. So that'll be a total of nine quarts. And then we'll bring it up to temperature. I think uh, 163 degrees is what you, is the max expansion for transmission fluid. So you need to get it up to pretty much operating temperature. And then it gives time for the transmission fluid to expand uh, as much as it's going to. And then you can top the transmission off. So I'll pick it back up uh, once we get all this in. And then you can we can shift through the gears and see if we've got us a fix on our hands. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, we got the transmission in. It's a little after nine o'clock. We've been working on this thing for a little while, plus one other vehicle. We've kind of been bouncing back and forth. I have nine quarts of transmission fluid in it. I'm going to go ahead and start it for the first time and back it up. And I'm going to run through the gears uh, just to circulate the fluid, get the vehicle up to temperature. And once it's up to temperature, I'll check the transmission fluid and I'll top it off from there. Also just change the oil and everything and all the, I mean, both differentials, transfer case and everything's been changed. So I'm gonna film starting it up for the first time and actually putting the Jeep in reverse and we will see if it will die on us like it has been in the past. So here we go, let's start it. All right, let's start it up here. Let's let it idle just for a moment and have not put it in reverse yet. So I've got 71,338 miles. All right, Mike is going back there. He's gonna put the pipe on the exhaust and we gotta 
let it warm up and stuff so we don't want to breathe the fumes so we're going to back it up to the door so here we go i'm going to put this in reverse we're going to watch the tack and let's see if this drops oh beautiful so far so good cycle through the gears just a little bit i'm going to put it in drive reverse neutral and so on just to make sure everything's oh yeah that's a lot better neutral drive i mean it it barely drops any just like your normal you know driving when you rpms go up when it's a little bit cold it or idles a little high so when you put it in gear and it drops down it's you know to the normal idling range so ours reverse still at 900 ish 800 park reverse all right i'm excited so I think that fixed it. So saying that, if you have a problem with this being cold and starting it, putting it in reverse and then it's stalling out, this could be an issue. Uh, the This is a 2016, a torque converter may be the issue. So saying that, he told the, the guy that rebuilt the torque converter for me, uh, he said that it's pretty popular to have to put a torque converter in before 100,000 miles on a 2016. He said, he, he told me that he has seen it a lot. Uh, so I'm not sure. Uh, me, I've not really heard a lot of people having this issue, so I kind of had to figure it all out. But So we got it fixed, and I'll try to keep you updated. Some more videos coming, because I found out some other stuff that I'm just going to do. You don't really have to do it, but I'm going to do some other stuff as well, like an alignment and stuff like that. I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.